Hello, I hope you're doing well. This is Mr. Stewart from the Math 7 Fossil Ridge Intermediate School team. We're going over Chapter 4.2 Quiz, which is finding solution sets of inequalities uh, using additive inverse. Uh, we should also probably include in that very long title that we need to graph those solution sets as well. Uh, but looking at question number one here, um, it reads, what graph represents the solution set from the following inequality? If you haven't passed the 4.1 quiz, you want to go back and do that first. I would not recommend you taking the 4.2 quiz until you've taken the 4.1 quiz and have shown that you understand it very well. Uh, but this is uh, not something that's, that's too horrible. Um, let me make up another one. I'll start with x plus... I don't know, 3 is greater than or equal to 5, I'll say, okay? And so what we're doing here is, is you need to understand that when, we're, when it comes to solving for a solution or a solution set, meaning finding x, we solve it the same way that we would isolate a variable in equations. So chapter three, chapter three is all about solving for equations. Well, chapter four is about solving for inequalities and we do the exact same things. So we look at this and we think, okay, this is a positive three. I need to undo this positive three to, be, to get x alone. And so to undo this positive three here, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So this time it's an inequality, but there is still a barrier here. You still need to separate them out. 3 and a negative 3 goes away. X comes down and X is left alone. Only this time instead of writing an equal sign, because that's an equation, we actually write an inequality sign. We write the inequality just the way it was written up here. So that means that x is greater than or equal to uh, whatever a 5 and a negative 3 is. And remember, we're always combining these. So it's a 5, 5 positives, 4, 5, 3 negatives. So 2 negatives will cancel out 2 positives, and I'm left with 3 positive numbers. I'm that was supposed to be 3. Yeah, so there we go. That uh, that will cancel out one more on this side. Anyway, we're left with two positive numbers. So three take away, so five take away three is two. This would be my solution. But now this is asking me to find the graph that represents this solution. And so you need to remember how to graph this. Okay, if I'm on a number line here, here's zero, here's one, here's two. The x the x is greater than or equal to 2. That x could be equal to 2. So that means 2 is a possible solution here. So I'm going to include that as one of my solutions. Now, anything that is x is going to be something that's larger than 2. And the graph, the number lines themselves, so these number lines, these, these arrows on the number lines, these are all representing a potential value of what x could be, or at least, you know, potentially. So this is kind of saying, okay, if x is larger than 2, x is equal to 2, yes, but if it's larger than 2, that means that anything above 2, like 3, is, an, is a solution, 4 is a solution, but don't forget all of those rational numbers in between them. So really, anything larger than a positive 2 is going to be part of the solution set of this inequality. So that's kind of what's happening here. Nothing below it would be true, so none of these can be included in that arrow. So the arrow is representing all of the x's, all of the x's, anything that x could be. And there's an infinitely many solutions to this. All of these numbers here, all of these should be x's or could be one of the x's. Like they're all x's. There's so many of them, and they're going to continue going that way. So that's how you solve for inequalities. Remember, this is just using the additive inverse idea. And so if you look at these again, this time this is just asking you to solve for the inequality and tell me what b should be you know, greater than or less than or equal to. And let's make up another one. So b, and yes, we use rational numbers. b subtract, I don't know, I'll make one up. One third is greater than or equal to a negative two thirds. Just make it super simple, okay? Uh, remember that 
fractions are just numbers. This is a negative one-third, and I need to think about how I would undo a negative one-third. How do I undo a subtraction? Well, I do addition. I add one-third to both sides. I add one-third to both sides. And so this is a two-thirds plus a positive one-third. And so those cancel out. B comes down. B is left alone. And B, the, the inequality, stays the same. B is still going to be greater than or equal to whatever happens on this side. Okay, so I'm um, going to go through this now and just think to myself, okay, what is negative two-thirds? plus one-third. And let's see, well they share a common denominator and that's nice. So I've got a negative two plus one all over three and that's going to be equal to a negative one over three. So my solution would be a negative one-third. This is my solution. So B is anything that's just greater than a negative one-third. So on my graph Here's a one right here, one third, negative one third would be about right there, right? So B is going to be anything that is equal to, to one negative one third or larger than a negative one third, and this would be my graph. Of course, this isn't asking you to graph it this time, it's just asking you to come up with the correct solution. Okay. So in this case, now we're just asking you to find the correct solution. Notice how u is greater than some unknown. So all you're going to have to type in here is the number value, okay? And so that's what we're looking at here. u is u subtract some decimal. I'll make it up quickly. Is greater than a negative, I don't know, 4.0. One as well, do that. So again, decimals are just numbers. Don't treat it any differently. Undo the minus 3.1 by adding 3.1 to both sides. And I think you'll discover that, gosh, if you were really good in chapter three, then you're gonna be really good in chapter four as well. So u is left alone, is still greater than, because that just comes down and doesn't change whatever this happens to be. Well, 4.1. I'm sorry, negative 4.1 and a positive 4.1. That's just finding the difference. So that goes to zero. The decimal comes down, and that becomes a one. And it's a negative still. So it's a negative one. So you would be larger than a negative one. Here is zero. Here is a negative one. U is larger than, larger than, but not equal to this time. Larger than, but not equal to uh, negative one. So this is how my graph would look on mine. Yours would look different clearly, but it's just asking you to type in the correct answer here. Okay, now let's read this together so you understand it. It says select the inequality that represents the story. So it's not even asking you to solve it this time, it's just asking you to set it up. It says to play on the football team. A seventh grader must weigh no more than 110 pounds. Your neighborhood is in your neighbor is in seventh grade and weighs 94 pounds. It says write an inequality and write and solve an inequality that represents how much weight your neighbor can gain and still meet the requirement. Okay, so I'm gonna take those away now. Um, yeah, some important pieces of information. No more than 110 pounds. Your neighbor is already 94 pounds. And so no more than is talking specifically about a, a, a number that could be. So what this is saying, it couldn't be more than 110 pounds, right? So here, here's the weight, like here's zero. Here's the weight limit, 110 pounds up here. Like this, this individual could be 110 pounds and still play in the in the league football. Uh, he could be smaller than 110 pounds, right? But he couldn't be larger than 110 pounds. If he's bigger than 110 pounds, I guess they just don't want very large kids playing football, which seems counterintuitive to me. But that's what's happening, and so, so this graph is sort of representing your inequality. But you need to be able to set this up because this student down here is 94 pounds. And so he's got a little bit of leeway. 
he can't just gain as much weight as, as he wants, but he can gain a little bit of weight and still be okay to play. And so that's the question, is set up an inequality that represents this. So hopefully this will allow you to think about what, uh, what it means to be no more than and uh, how that might help you set up your inequality. And that is all of the questions from Chapter 4.2. Hopefully this quiz was helpful for you, and have a good day.